Normally the streets of Exhibition Place are open to the general public, but not this weekend. We're getting set for the rumble of NASCAR Thunder in Toronto. 33 drivers are strapped into their 3,000 pound ground pounders as they get set to take on the summer heat of Toronto. The NASCAR Canadian Tire Series has had four different winners in four races. Round one, witness the number 22 Canadian Tire Dodge of Scott Steckley pace the field, resulting in a triumph at Sports Speedway. When it was all sorted out at ICAR, in round number two, Robin Buck survived the tail of the tarmac and picked up his first NASCAR win. Race three at the historic Delaware Speedway saw a resurgence of speed as the wily Don Thompson motored his way to the top. Then in round number four, the Castrol Kid, DJ Kennington, out horsepowered and out maneuvered J.R. Fitzpatrick to uncork the champagne at Mosport Raceway. Race number five comes to Toronto and the question remains, will one previous winner repeat or will we see a fifth different driver take the checkers here in the 2011 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series? Hello and welcome to our TSN viewers from across the country as we get set for racing NASCAR style in the streets of Toronto 100 here at the CNE grounds of Exhibition Place. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Billy Rose Jr. and Todd Lewis, as always, is trackside. Billy, can you believe this is the 25th anniversary of this event? 25 years of excitement, Dave. This is the, it's just steeped in history here at the CNE grounds. Fast race cars, big crowds, party atmosphere. The promoters here have rode it up and down, good years, bad years, and they're in it for the long haul. But I remember the exciting days, 1999, stock cars came here for the first time, and they put on a whale of a show. I know, because I was here, and I'm looking forward to today. These big Thunder stock cars, 33 of them, this is a real battleship racetrack. Looking forward to an exciting day. Well, as you mentioned, it's back to the good times. A record field set to take green here today. And if you look at the Castro Points chase, it's still Scott Steckley on top. Four top five finishes in four events. Well, Steckley's a veteran and knows what the deal's all about. You don't have to win all the races. You just need to be competitive. And one thing he does know for sure, to win the big trophy, you got to look at the big picture. And today will be a big picture day. Win, lose, or draw, he'll be patient and he'll be on the podium if everything goes right. Well, he will be watching in his rearview mirror here today because J.R. Fitzpatrick and D.J. Cannington starting to hit their midseason stride. Then you throw in a couple road course ringers as well. Jason Bowles returns to the series in the Gaunt Brothers number 11. And Andrew Rangers is back. Andrew Ranger, I should say, is back in the Dave Jacobs prepared number 22. Well, very stout road course racers. Both guys have been honing their skills in the K&N series. But when they come to play, they come to play hard because they don't worry about points. The only thing Jason's here for, win. The only thing Ranger's here for, win but our guys the regulars they're still looking at the points going back to talking about steckley looking at the big picture dj will take what the car will give him today fitzpatrick he'll want to win for sure he's aggressive he's young full of vigor he is really exciting to watch so look for him to move forward today as well and when you take a look at qualifying it was one of those road course ringers the 11 of jason bulls took the keystone light qualifying pool award and he did it in track record fashion too beating the track record set by Andrew Ranger last year. This year setting a 116.260 for his fast time. That's four tenths of a second quicker than the track record, which was set last year. Before we head to green, let's send it downstairs to Todd for a check on what the buzz is down on the grid. Todd? Fellas, I talked to a lot of drivers today. They're concerned about certain corners. They're concerned about patience for themselves and for all of the other participants. They really feel that this is going to be a race of survival. 35 laps is a long way to go with these cars. And with this big field, everybody's in kind of a wait and see mode to see what happens towards the end. Uh, you got to stay out of trouble. There's a lot of cars here today. Uh, you got to stay up front. And you got to be there the last lap to have that for that checkered flag. Uh, you know, anything can happen on that last lap, but that's where you need to be. You need to be one, two, three uh, on the last lap. Patience. Patience and aggression. You got to control both at once. Patience. Patience. More patience. Um, it's going to be a long race, and you're going to have to be there at the end. The goal, you know, is to win, but what we need to take is uh, to, to save the brake a little bit, the tower, and to be there to the end. Uh, consistency, no mistakes. Uh, you're gonna have to have to be on your game all day long. Patience, aggression. <laughs> Not sure how you do both those at the same time, but uh, you're gonna need them both. Brakes and uh, a little good luck. There is one common theme among all the drivers here today, fellas. They're excited about putting on a good show on this big stage. 
Thanks very much, Don. Billy, he's right. You can see the excitement on the drivers' faces as they're ready to go here today. But with so many rows of these big rumbling stock cars, one little mistake can be so costly. Well, you got to be patient. The start, first and foremost, too deep down into turn one. There's really only one real racing group down to turn one. So you got to get to the outside as quick as you can, get single file. Then down the back stretch, more exciting. 165 miles an hour, Dave. You got to drive the car deep into the corner, brake hard while the car's straight, and then knife edge it across the right-hand corner. Hopefully somebody's not scooting down the inside making a bonsai run, but those are the two most important passing zones. Turn one, turn three. Well, you said it. Patience will be a key word, but will it come into play? When we return, we'll throw the green for the Straits of Toronto 100 here at the CNE. Number five of the 2011 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series, the Streets of Toronto 100 is brought to you by Mopar, authentic performance. By Castrol Edge, our best Castrol ever. And by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. Well, this crowd is ready, the drivers are buckled in. Now let's set it down to Adam Ross, the NASCAR public address announcer. And now, race fans, for the moment we've been waiting for, today's Grand Marshal from Dr. Pepper, Ray Simpson. On behalf of Dr. Pepper, drivers, start your engines! And with that, these engines come to life. We'll have a number of onboard views here today. The 11, the pole sitter, Jason Bulls, will carry a couple of different views from inside his Fuel Doctor Dodge. There's Jason White in the 21, hoping for another great run uh, behind the wheel of his Dodge. And there's the 23 of Jeff Lapsovich. He'll carry an onboard camera, so will the double zero of Pierre Bork. So a lot of great views to see the action here today. And a great look and feel of race cars. Look at these things roll up. Horsepower here at the CNE grounds. And now let's take a look at the Fuel Doctor grid. And of course, on pole is Jason Bowles in the 11. Andrew Ranger in the 27 to the outside of him. That'll be interesting to watch going into turn number one. Scott Steckley in the 22 and Kerry Mix in the 02 make up row number two. And there's Don Thompson Jr. in the eight. DJ Kennington in the 17. He won at most board. Row number four has Robin Bach in the 66. Peter Clute in the 42. Great starting spot for him. Taking a look back to row number five, J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 84. He'll have a little bit of work to do. And Jeff Lapsovich in the 23. L.P. Dumoulin starts in the 47 in row number six alongside the 56 of Howie Skinnell. Eli Arsenault drives the 03 and Mark Dilley in the nine make up row number seven. Row number eight has the 50 of Joey McComb and Ron Beauchamp Jr. in the 60. And then taking a look back to row number nine, Stephen Matthews, the rookie in the 15, and Jason White in the 21. Row 10 has Dexter Stacy in the 55, and J.F. Dumoulin in the 04. And then row number 11, there's Isabel Tremblay in the 07, another rookie, alongside Jason Hathaway in the 3. There's a story behind him. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Derek White drives the 99. Jared Whistle in the 44. That's row number 12. Row number 13 has James Van Domselaar in the 14, and Pierre Bork in the double zero. Row number 14 has Brad Graham back in the 19, and Dave Connolly driving the 82. And then row number 15, David Thorndike in the 67. Hugo Vanini drives the 97. And then row 16, John Ferrano in the 59. And Noel Dowler in the 5. And all by himself on row number 17, Ray Korkmalsh Jr. in the 29, making his first start in the series. Well, let's take a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. Remember here, Toronto, it's a 2.8 kilometer street course, 35 laps, no pit stops. Andrew Rains are starting out front, and it's a hot, sunny day. This place is fast. The best passing opportunity down in turn one. Hard on the gas down the back stretch of turn three. Hard on the brakes and turn it in. Cut across. Real technical through four, five, and six. And you got another shot at passing right there in turn eight. But you got to be careful. And then back hard on the gas down the start finish line. That's a fast lap here at Toronto Indy. And it should be an exciting lap as well. You saw our front row consists of Andrew Ranger and Jason Bowles. There is no love loss between these two competitors. They had a fierce battle in Montreal last year. Can he make a move? He's going down on the inside. Hard on the brakes. They're going to touch. He does. He punched him out of the way. Here we go. Punched him out of the way. Here comes Ranger. Is he going to punch? Ranger in a dramatic and wild finish. 
guys, keep your eye on the front row in this one. Jason Bowles, of course, the pole sitter, and Andrew Ranger alongside have a history. They were punting each other at the event in Montreal last year, and maybe we'll see a little beaten and banging again between these two as we make our way through this event. Also pay attention to the number three car, Jason Hathaway, with a big cast on his right hand. He has reserves standing by Kevin Dowler, former cast car Super Series great. Kevin's kind of like being an understudy in the theater, waiting to see if Jason will get out of the car or not. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm really excited. Ed Hackinson called me this week and gave me an opportunity to drive the uh, Rockstar Dodge, and I'm excited. You know, I'm here for my son, but if I get an opportunity to run that car, I'll give it all I can. We'll see if, if Kevin gets into the car for Jason or not, and yes, as he mentioned, we'll be paying attention to his son, Noel Dowler, as well. Well, it's interesting, Todd. Jason Hathaway uh, did break his right wrist in her last event at Mosport, a big crash in turn number two. Now, it has been bothering him here, so look for him to jump out in the first caution period, his first opportunity. But the field is forming out of turn number 11. Jason Bulls, your pole sitter, the 27 of Andrew Ranger lining up alongside, looking for the green and waves, and we're underway here in Toronto. Watch this, three wide heading to turn one. You got to get it down to single file. Look, oh, we've got contact already. I talked about this. It funnels down to one lane and one lane only, and there's still three wide. Eli Arsenault with heavy damage. You see a fender flapping in the hood, all broken up on that 0-3 machine. But what a land rush start. You see them all fan out now down Lakeshore Boulevard. Hard on the brakes, down into turn three, jockeying for position. You can get through here side by side, but it's not the preferred way. Thompson up the inside of the 84, all kinds of loose heading up the hill. Riding on board with the 21 of Jason White as he chases the 60 of Ron Mochon Jr., currently sitting in 13th position. On board with Lapsman, that's the Tim Hortons car. This is the technical spot I was talking about, down to the inside. On the throttle gently, let it drift out to the fence and shift one, two, three right here. This is another passing zone, but you gotta be careful. And the top three able to open up a gap on the rest of the pack, and there goes J.R. Fitzpatrick to the inside of former teammate Don Johnson Jr. side by side, a battle for sixth position. Thompson in the preferred groove, coming off the last corner to head down the straightaway. She'll be all horsepower now as Donnie gets up through the gearbox. So J.R. Fitzpatrick in the Chevy, Don Thompson Jr. in the Ford. Fitzpatrick on the inside will try to outbreak. And they touch going into one. You saw that was going to happen. And J.R. Fitzpatrick backed out of it. Don Thompson Jr. gathered it back up, but that lets that gap in the front get a little bit bigger. And with them guys fighting for position, that allowed the 66 a buck to close up on the tailpipe. And problems for the 14 of James Van Donselaar making his first start of 2011. He gets the Chevy refires and tucks in front of the 67 of David Thorndike, but everybody still chasing the 11 of Jason Bulls. Andrew Ranger currently sits in second spot, and the 22 of Scott Steckley holding down third. Well, they've settled in real good, David Hall. All single file, just putting in laps right now. We heard everybody talk about patience, so now that Patience good, they're all single file. Now we just get down to log and laps because no pit stops, no fuel, no tires. This is all about the driver and how well he conserves his race car. And Ranger hanging it out a little bit. And the 56, Howie Skinelli is off. You saw that waving blue flag indicating there was a problem in that corner. And Howie Skinelli is off in turn nine. Well, that's too bad. The Jim Bray Motorsports car qualified really well. Howie Scannell has a lot of road course experience, and Jim Bray bought him a good piece this week, but they're broken down and out of the race. Quick bit riding on board with the Canadian Tire Dodge, a 22 of Scott Stackley, who is hunting the top two, and J.R. Fitzpatrick finally gets through underneath the eight. He's been working on that pass for a number of laps. Well, I didn't get to see the whole thing, but it looked like Don Thompson just moved over, gave him the line, and let him go through, and he did it in such a way that he did not lose the spot to the 66 as well. Now here comes Robin Buck. You remember he won at Icar looking for that position, and he will have it. A strong move under braking, even gets a chance to duck back in the line before having to turn in for turn three. Well, Don Thompson just a little bit too much rear brake in that car. You see Donnie's car all kind of tail happy under braking down into turn three. So Robin Buck now up to seven position as you see the field come through. Now riding on board with the 23 of Jeff Lapsovich trailing the rookie, the 15 of Steven Matthews, and they come together. Lapsovich is around, and he gets it re-fired. There you can see the view out of the Rockstar Dodge of Lapsovich sitting, looking in the wrong direction as the entire field comes filtering through. 
Wow, we talked about patience. That, that, that corner is just not a passing zone. You know, Matthews with no experience left the door open and Lapsovich tried to fill the hole and it cost.